Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. I have another unexpected day off work. This time it's not weather, it is uh, construction. We're having some floors replaced in the church right beneath my office and it is noisy, it is dusty, it is smelly, so I've got the day off. Um, so I'm going to quilt. I am determined to get this quilt finished, the Cat's Cradle quilt, and I'm going to um, show you a little bit of the quilting that I'm doing on these alternate squares. And I know I've already done that, but this time I'm going to use a, a template or a ruler. Um, I did a lot of quilting yesterday and um, I got all the blocks done in a row of the alternate blocks and I was having trouble keeping a smooth line on the uh, filigree part of that design. So I pulled out my arc ruler and um, I'm going to just show you my quilting with that. So I'm going to adjust the camera and get it focused in on the quilt and uh, show you a little bit of how I'm doing that. Of course my uh, furnace would have had to kick on right at the time I'm getting ready to start quilting. But what I'm having problems with is getting around this section and getting it to look smooth. I'm not sure exactly why um, because I didn't have that problem with the first row I did, but since then I've been struggling with it. So I am going to use this template here and use it to guide me around these curves. So I am still in stitch regulated mode and I'm at 12 stitches per inch and we'll see how this works. Now in these tight sections, I'm not going to use the template, but I will pick that up here as soon as I get through this. This is a lot slower doing it this way, but I think I like the result a little better. I'll just switch to the inside curve so I can keep my ruler on this side. It's not perfect, but it is a lot better, um, so I'm pretty happy with that. The quilting is all done, and I still have the quilt on the machine, and I'm going to use this bottle of water and just spray it to get these markings out. So I'm leaving it on the machine to um, help keep it from pulling in. The I'm not worried too much about the fabric pulling in. It's more of the thread shrinking. And I want to just see how this goes. Now these blue and the orange fabrics don't need to be sprayed because I use chalk to mark those, but the green sections um, and up here do. So I'm just gonna spray those and see if that'll take care of it. It seems to be doing okay. So also let me know if this blue is going to bleed in. Hopefully not. So 
seems to be doing okay. So I'm just going to continue spraying. I'll let this section of the quilt dry and then I'll roll to the next section. Um, it probably would be faster just to dunk this in a tub of water, but um, you know, wet quilts are heavy. I have problems lifting heavy things and um, I just want to try this and see how this will work. Here's what the quilt looks like with all the markings out. I think they're out for the most part. Um, I'll look, o look over it real close and see if there's any areas that need a little bit more water, but it did real well. I didn't have any bleeding of the fabric and uh, the marks came out real easily. So um, I think it's looking good. It's uh, about two hours since I sprayed it and it's already dry even with it being cold down here. So I'm going to roll to the next section of the quilt and spray that and just keep going until I get it done. Okay, I am done with um, the quilting on the Cat's Cradle quilt and I also have all the marks removed and now I'm making the binding and I'm using the green border fabric which is a grunge fabric by Moda and um, I cut this in strips that are two and a quarter inch wide and I did a mitered seam here and I'm just pressing these seams open and then I'll fold this fabric in half and press it and then I'll start applying the binding and you can do this on your long arm and I've done that for a lot of quilts but I think on this one I'm going to go ahead and do it on my domestic machine with my quarter inch piecing foot and that'll just it just makes it a little bit more accurate it's really difficult on the long arm to get it accurate and it takes just as long to do it and um, so I'm just going to do it on the domestic machine so I can sit down and take care of it. I cut I think eight strips that are two and an eight two and a quarter inch long and I needed 301 inches to go all the way around the quilt and this gave me about 330 40 inches I believe something like that so I'll have my extra that I need and I'm just going to I'm going to miter this corner first you can't see that I'm going I'm going to have a mitered edge to um, attach the other loose end when we I get around to the end of the binding so I'm going to go ahead and miter that now and then just so or press my binding in half now if you're using uh, if you're using a really thick if you're using a really thick batting you may want to cut your binding a little bit wider like two and a half inches and if you're using a really flat batting like 100% cotton warm and natural something like that you may want to cut it down at two inches and I find with the 80-20 batting that I use that um, two and a quarter inch is usually pretty good width So this takes just a little while, it won't be too long, and I'll have this all pressed and ready to attach to the quilt. And I'm using steam, you don't have to, but um, I like using steam on this iron. The Cat's Cradle quilt is finally done, and next I'm going to show you some close-ups of the quilting.
Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my newest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.